So today what we've got is this HP laptop that is not turning on. I happen to know why it's not turning on and have all the resources to fix it. A quick visual inspection can show that right here the DC jack is broken. When I pull it out I'll show a little bit more because it's hard to see inside of this enclosure right here, but the barrel inside is missing and it will no longer power on. I've gone through the steps and I've already removed all the screws, I've already taken this apart, so this is more for show than anything else. But this particular HP laptop has screws that go all around and it's got some rubber padding right here that needs to come off to also access some additional screws. It's got a DVD drive that will pull out before you can take the chassis off and then this bottom piece can pretty much come right off. Going back here we can see this is the overall motherboard itself. Battery's been removed. It does not have a drive and again we've got that fault in the DC jack right there. The repair itself is pretty straightforward. All I need is a known good HP DC jack. This one's cable length is a little bit longer, but the connection here matches as well as the indentations of the actual jack. And as you can see, this DC jack being brand new does not have the missing barrel. And then as it's also missing the solid state drive or the drive itself, we're gonna throw in this Western Digital green drive that I had lying around, 240 gigs. That will allow us to install Windows 10 and then hopefully sell this guy for a profit. So what we've got right here is the DC jack that sits right here underneath this right hinge next to the fan and the heat sink. That has a cable that will come through under in here and it connects to this portion right here on the motherboard. Indicated by the green cable will tell you what type of DC jack you need. I recommend searching up those jacks on eBay using the model number if you need to buy one. So this jack should come straight out of the socket on the motherboard. You wanna be careful not to cause any damages as always. We're just gonna see kind of where this cable goes through to see how much we're gonna to need to remove. The cable lines up here right through the display cabling. So it's not anything that's too convoluted to get to, pretty easily accessible. It does not look like I will need to remove the heat sink or anything, just probably some of the mounting screws for the hinge mount itself. We've got two screws that are holding this in. Now this video cable might also need to be removed so that we have the accessibility that we need without causing any damage to the cabling. So we're just gonna give a slight lift on the laptop here to loosen that hinge. And that won't work because there's one additional screw right here. That is, this screw is holding in the fan, or at least is one of the screws holding in the fan. We open, and now we've got a little bit of tension where we can hopefully access just the jack itself, and we can pull it right out of the socket. So this is just a metal housing around the actual jack itself, and as you can tell, it's all broken on the inside there. That's gonna prevent a proper connection and prevent the unit from charging and turning on. So we have our brand new jack. We take that and we put it in the same exact spot that it was in. We should be able to kind of slide it right in. Sometimes putting these in is more difficult than taking it out, but this situation was just able to push it in and then we're gonna use our finger to push that hinge mount down. We're gonna take the cabling and route it back through the video cabling Well, so once we have it in, we want to route it through as neatly and nicely as we can, but the plastic clip right here where my finger is, that clip broke. So shoddy design doesn't really matter. It just holds the cabling in place. So what we want to do is take the positioning of the cable itself and put it where it needs to go. For reference, you can see that the original jack in my right hand has a black dot. A dot on it usually indicates the side that needs to be facing upward. The new DC jack does not have the same dot, so you would know which direction do I put it. You might not know, so if your previous part has a dot, you know that we're going to put it with the connections facing upward. And so this is going to slide right down and in. All I had to use was my fingers slide it in, it goes straight in when it's in the proper position. 
and I have quite the excess cabling here. So what we're going to do is just try our best to route it likely next to the fan itself. It might bubble up a little bit, but that stays just like that and it's nothing that a little bit of tape won't fix. So if you need to, you just add a little bit of tape, put it on there. So the next thing we want to do now that we have the DC jack replaced is we want to grab the AC adapter. This is a genuine HP AC adapter. We want to plug it in and make sure that we're going to get some power to the board. You can always try this before you go through the installation. You can remove the cable from the old jack, plug in the new cable from the new jack, and then test it before routing the cables and doing everything. You can halfway do the repair without having to worry about doing the entire repair. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the three screws back to the hinge mount. And as you can tell, that indicator light on the DC jack is white. That is saying that the unit is getting power, but it's not charging the battery because it's not amber because the battery is missing. I'm going to move the DC jack to the side a little bit, gain access to the mount. Uh, maximum recording time was reached, <laughs> so that's going to be a very ugly cut right there. And so we've got that section all set. Now what we should be able to do in this point is open up the computer. We should be able to hopefully turn it on and get power to the computer. Boom, okay. I just wanna keep the screen the way that it is for, the room's messy, so we're gonna keep the screen the way that it is to show as little as possible, but it says the CMOS checksum is invalid. That's common, excuse me, that was rude. It says the, the CMOS uh, checksum is invalid, and that is common when a unit has been without power and without battery power for an extended period of time because the internal CMOS battery will drain and it will not be able to properly tell you the date and time in the regular BIOS settings. That will be resolved once you maintain power to the unit unless the CMOS chip is bad. The CMOS on this unit is going to be this little 2032 battery right here. You pop that out, pop another one in if you need it, or you can always test it with a multimeter. That's usually going to be just fine. So now it says that the boot device not found because there's no hard drive. Simple enough. I'm just going to go ahead and turn the computer off. You can either hold the power button in this case, or you can just unplug it because there's no auxiliary battery power. Right here is where the space for the hard drive is. We know that we've only got one section for the hard drive to go because we've got the SATA data and power connections right here, and there's no slot here for any NVMe configuration. So that means that we need a standard 2.5 inch drive. I never work with mechanical drives anymore. I always do solid state drives. So we're gonna go ahead and install this Western Digital Green Drive that I alluded to earlier in the video. Line up the connections here because we don't have the caddy for it. It's gonna go pretty much upside down, plug in right there, and then sit there. But you may be like, but Don, how is it gonna just like float around and make all the noise and everything, it would, unless you have the sticky pad. This is just a basic 3M double-sided tape pad that I like to use on almost everything when it comes to solid state drives because you don't need a caddy for these because there's no moving parts. And since there's no moving parts, you don't have to worry about any damage happening to the actual drive. So we're just gonna apply that on one side, line it up, and it goes right in and you're good to go. Now it will be a little bit difficult to remove this if you need to, but this one actually connects down to this daughter board. So you have more than one way to remove the drive if needed. Now we have a drive installed. We have a new DC jack. We're getting power to the unit, as you can see with that light. And we also power the unit on. So the next steps we're gonna do is go ahead and install Windows 10. So what I'm gonna do is take the ISO that I've got labeled on this drive, plug it into really any USB port. And if there's no operating system on this drive, after it does its initial boot up, it should power on and immediately go to the Windows bootloader. So it says boot device not found. All right, sorry about the interruption there. It's gonna look like I did some crazy magic to get this system to come back up, but all I did was just turn the computer off, rotate it my way, turn it back on, and now we're sitting at the HP logo screen. It should load into the bootloader there. It is recognizing with caps lock and that that's working. So we do know that the unit is not just halted and it is now loading something. So it is either gonna be trying to load the operating system that's already on this drive, and if it's not, it's gonna boot into the Windows 10 bootloader. So perfect, we're just gonna go through the install here real quick. Make sure that it sees the actual drive itself. If it sees the drive itself, then we're pretty golden. Let's see if I can get a little bit, that's fine, yeah. 
Now notice that I haven't put the computer back together yet, and that's because you wanna make sure that you can fully solidify the repair before you start putting screws back in it, because there's nothing worse than trying to put all the screws back together only to find out that, dang it, I left a cable unplugged and something doesn't work correctly. This is an abnormal amount of time, by the way, for this to be taking, so there could be more wrong with this unit. There could be something wrong with the board, could be something wrong with the drive, could be something wrong with the RAM. Uh, this does look like it is a fully formatted drive, so there's nothing on it, so I'd rule that one out. Granted, Western Digital drives are not my first choice. So this is going to go through the installation of the Windows 10 operating system. Once that's all done, we have all the drivers and the updates and everything to take care of, getting it connected to the internet. We'll charge and discharge the battery itself, but I don't think there's going to be any problems with that. And then the reassembly process will be pretty straightforward when we get to that part. While this is going through the installation, I wanted to talk about the DC jack itself and how you can tell that the DC jack is the problem, the motherboard is the problem, or the AC adapter is the problem. Obviously, when you have similar signs like this that show physical damage to the jack, you can very easily tell that that is the problem. But if you don't have those sort of issues and the computer's not turning on, not charging the battery, you can have a problem with either the AC adapter, that's the cord that comes from the, com from the wall to the computer, or you can have issues with the DC jack, which is what we replaced, or the actual motherboard itself receiving said power. If you have a multimeter available, that can give you some indication, but it's not always 100% correct as to where the problem is at, because you can test that the AC adapter is volting correctly based on the voltage requirements on the bottom of the adapter. Most of them go between 19.2 to 19.7 volts. And likewise, you can also test the DC jack as well when it is receiving power. Once we have this Windows installation all completed, the next step is going to be putting the laptop back together. So you close the laptop, you put the bottom casing back on it. I'll show you where all the screws go. Install the battery, install the DVD drive, and then you're pretty much golden from there. Now I am on a solid surface that is not connected to carpet. I have been grounded by being able to touch metal, so I'm not able to cause any damage to the unit. Working on a computer in this way, if you know what you're doing, is perfectly safe and you're not gonna have any problems. Turns out I don't have any more footage of this after the repair, but I'd like to say it's fully functional and was sold a long time ago. Sorry for the quick outro. This has been the Don with the Don Tech, and remember, the Don's got your back. Except when it comes to ending videos sometimes.